get your mind switched off rugby every now and again? To be honest, this time, um, sounds real bad, but I just shut rugby out, to be honest. Um, I didn't really want to know. Uh, after the last time, I was like, I was like, oh, I'm going to be around the boys more this time and things like that. And I was just like, I don't really, not I didn't care, but I didn't want to see it. So I just, I knew what affected me last time. So I just stopped it from happening, um, which is pretty bad in that sense because I wasn't really following the team as much. Just kind of, I was getting on with my own thing, but just ticking it off a bit at a time. So I was going uh, training and they go out onto the pitch and I just go in gym for like four hours and do that. So I wasn't, but Everyone around me kind of carried me through this time. Like the missus was amazing. Um, my dad and my parents and everyone helping me out. The coaches, everyone just kind of, I think there was a sense of feeling sorry for me. It happened because I got hugs and things like that from people. So um, once that had happened, oh, it's crashed. Has it crashed? We're here, we're here. Else? All good. Yeah. No, no, it's fine. I was like, oh. Yeah, I got a few hugs from some of the players and stuff when it happened and things like that. So I think a lot of lads felt gutted for me. Um, so they they kind of were a bit nicer to me and things like that to try and help me through. But um, yeah, just kind of took it step by step and just just enjoyed life out of rugby. That was the main one. Um, took took misses away um, to like Italy, got engaged, things like that. Just did things outside of rugby, bought a rental, did that up. Um, just to, for life outside and started reading, read loads of books, um, read a lot of books on like, um, what's his name, from SAS and things like that, Who Dares Wins. Um, Middleton. Yeah, Middleton, read all his and uh, Eddie Hall's books and things what I loved and just looked at their mindset on things and just took things from that and just in, enjoyed it and then just tried using it for my own good and it, it helped, it helped a lot to be fair. So we entered 2020, mate, fresh off your rehab, fresh into a new decade. Um, start the season without much thought, really. You, you, managed, you managed well, and then the coronavirus pandemic hit. Not just rugby league, not just sport, but everybody, the entire globe. And we all went into shutdown and we locked down and everything. And, and luckily, we managed to get through that season at least nine tries in 14 games for you, including, obviously, a bit of a spell on the sidelines with your elbow injury. How can you how can you recap twenty twenty for you and, and for the club? Um, just it was nuts to be honest. It was just, just a nuts year. Like I remember being sat before the game. I think at Bradford as last one we played before we went into lockdown, and we were like all laughing and joking, saying, "Oh, there's this virus. Everything's getting shut down." And we're like, "Give up." You know what I mean? We'll, we'll keep playing. Blah blah blah. It's not even that big, but and then like. That week, it was like, oh, yeah, we've got all these cases. It's getting bad. National lockdown, and we were all like, oh, my God. Like, we didn't think this. We were we were kind of joking about it, to be honest. You know, taking piss and being like, this is serious. And then next minute, I'm sat at home for four months thinking, when are we actually going to get black plane? What is going on? Um, and then we started, started, we started getting given the, the allowed athletes to start training and things like that you know rather than you just your hour walk a day so started running and stuff and it did me a world of good body felt amazing um after lockdown just because i got to do the running but i got i just did what i wanted to do at home like we did gym session but i did my own rehab and things like that. how my body felt i trained when i wanted did what i wanted and i really really felt good coming off the back of it i was like i'm in good shape i'm excited to go and then <laughs> Come back from that first game back, first carry two minutes in the game. Elbow, like I felt him grab hold of me, and I just felt my elbow pop. And I was like, "You're kidding!" I honestly, the anger I had, not not towards anyone, just I was just like, "Oh, I spent all last year out, came back, played six games, <laughs> spent four months sat there at home, played three minutes, injured, couldn't believe it. Honestly, head head were off." Um, like I just said to have my head, my head's fallen off here. But yeah, it, it was so painful. And I was like, right, give me all your painkillers you can give me. Like I'll, I'll try and get through it. So I popped all these painkillers and then literally took the neck. I thought, all right, I'll kick in now. Took a carry, someone whacked my elbow. I was just leant over in absolute, I, I was dripping with sweat from pain, things like that. I thought I was going to pass out. And I was just like, 
this ain't working. I was like, my elbow's killing. I might have to come off here. And <laughs> they sent a message back down saying, we've got no one. You've got to carry on. I was like, great. Sweet. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I'll play on. So, yeah, got through that. Went and checked it. They were like, oh, we don't know what it is. It says a ruptured, you know, main ligament down inside the elbow. Right, do I need a knot? Maybe. Went to see him. Said, no, looks like it's sweet. It's not like bending too much, you know, like it's not unstable and things like that. So I'm like, oh, cool. Says, you might get arthritis in your elbow when you're older, but that's all right, innit? I was like, oh, yeah, great. I'll just add it to the knees and everything else. Don't worry. So, um, yeah, so I uh, spent, I think it was, seven seven weeks on the sideline watching again um which was pretty agonizing because i stayed because it wasn't a big injury i stayed stuck into the team and all around it watching us getting whitewashed by catalan and then catalan again and then i don't even know mate i think everyone had a go on us last year when we were getting we had all the covid case and things like that everyone just dived in didn't they so um pretty tough to to watch all that and just wanted to help, like literally wanted to get on the pitch and do something. I was like, I feel good. Why am I not playing? Um, but then I think they were a bit of a curse, to be honest, because Kirsch took over my spot. Kirsch got injured. Liam K took over Kirsch. Liam K got injured. So I was like, this wing is an awful wing to be on. But it was just a mad year. Um, it was a year we wanted to get done because obviously we were playing without sounding like... Um, not a professional we were playing for the sake of playing like we had to play to get it done with everything what was going on we had to play to keep the sport going so and that's something we aimed to do and that's something we did but it's a year I definitely want to put behind us that was probably my least favourable year I've played I think everyone else on, on the globe uh, echoes that sentiment there mate and uh, just didn't want the best season. Obviously, we did have uh, on the other end of some idings, but as a Wakefield fan, I speak for myself, I'll speak for a lot of Wakefield, Wakefield fans, how proud we were of the team that we were the only team to finish the season. We appreciate everything that your boys did, obviously, going out there, obviously, battered bodies just to get the season done and uh, might have not finished high up on the table, but that is a really proud moment as a, as a supporter. So, thank you to all the, all the boys for that. By the way, we head on now into, the, into 2021. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. The season is obviously approaching and um, fingers crossed that the season goes off without a hitch and obviously we get through it and COVID is nothing but a distant memory come the back end of the season. Just two questions for you, mate. What are the aims of Wakefield Trinity in 2021 and what are your personal aims for the season? Um, for Wakefield, it's just everything's got to be better. We, we sat down and we realised everything has to improve. Um, mindset, like what we do, how hard we work, like it's not good enough. Like we've gone from top six, top six, top eight, blah, 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 or whatever, to 11th struggling two years in a row. Um, we're not happy with it. And it's something we, we, we've we all addressed. And that's why we started how we have done so early and things like that. It's something we want to aim to be pushing up there. And it's something we're massively keen on. So... Yeah, push, pushing up for that, that top end of the table or like there's some class teams in it. We just want improvement. We want to see improvement from what we've done. It's not it's not been good enough and we've acknowledged that. So that's that's a team goal. And um, for me personally, um, consistency, uh, injury free, um, real, real injury free. Uh, but I just want to play consistently and I, w- I want to play in that World Cup. That That's the main thing I want to, what's going to drive me this year, just like 2018. I, I want to be in that World Cup. Um, too many times I've missed out on internationals from being taught, obviously being in the squad and being injured and missing out on going, like I missed out on a GB tour and things like that. It was a pretty bitter, 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 bitter pill to swallow. So um, that's the drive for me this year. Just play well consistent and uh, get a lot of games under my belt and uh, well play my 100th Super League game somewhat what's been coming for a long time now so definitely want to tick that one off but um, yeah just the World Cup's the, everything to me this year it's something I'm, I'm massively set on so but for me well the well, last one for me Tom do you see yourself as obviously you mentioned Australia and the, the dream going over but do you see yourself being a one club man or do you reckon you'll go dabble in Australia at some point or what's your dream? 
I don't really know. Um, I do. I've always had the the sway of Australia. It's something I've loved since since I was younger. I just want to go test myself at, the, at that level and see how I because. Like we say, we always say oh, wingers and things like that don't go over there and do well. But I think, like I say, the adversity, I always get motivate, motivated by that and I, I want to go over there and see what I can do. Um, but it's never been the right time. Um, I wasn't, I didn't feel like I was, um, I'd done enough and I was, you know, experienced enough to go over there at the time when the opportunity came around, um, things like that. So, but now, obviously, just got got engaged last year and having having a kid in the next couple of months, things like that. So who knows, really? Just see how life outside of rugby goes around family. Very, very family oriented. So um, it'd be pretty tough to take take misses and the kid over there away from the family. But like I say, it's somewhat what I've always wanted to do. So I'd never say no. Um, but just depends at the time, really. Well. Watch the NRL, mate. Do you have a team? Uh, yeah, I've always, always since I was younger, I've always liked South Sydney. I oh. love it also. Um, that's a team I've always followed. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty tough. So, I really enjoyed it when they won the Premiership with uh, Sam Birch and things like that. So. Yeah, I mean, not a bad team to follow, mate. And especially this season, they've got a, a top squad. I reckon they'll probably be top four again going mm-hmm. into this season, mate, especially. Um, you mentioned it very briefly there, mate, but you've got a young young Ben on the way. Um, you've already got a young little little dog and your missus, you, you recently engaged as well. How, how are these new re- responsibilities affecting you? Obviously, you're not this young kid who's just fresh out of Stanningly now. You're you're about to be a dad. You're in, you're in your mid-20s and uh, you're a fully-fledged Super League player. What, what, what's the effect on you? Yeah, it's pretty rough, you know. Um, there's too, too many responsibilities. Uh, I remember moving out from moving here and being like, Whoa, I don't even do my washing. I still don't do my washing. My missus does the washing. <laughs> but, um, I'm pretty, pretty nervous. Um, it was a bit like, I had a dog at mum and dad's, but obviously I had help with that. So when I got a dog here, it was a bit, a bit of a step up, like having something what I had to keep alive and things like that, if you look at it that way. Um, <laughs> pretty rough way of putting it. But um, yeah, um, really excited. Really, really excited. But at the same time, um, very nervous and scared to, to have a kid but I, I'm happy with where I'm at like um, feel like I'm growing up as a person I'm not the you know young naive kid anymore so um, like to look at it in that aspect and really excited for what the future holds and things like that so it's just a bit scary getting a, getting older like I said asking in his senior how old he was the other day when he replied 20 I was like I remember being 20 I remember being that young kid and not really having a care in the world and getting to do what you want is, but I'm getting old now. So. Tell you what, mate, if you've got any baby names in your mind, Jamie, Jed or Joss go really well for blokes. All right. Is that just in case? All right, mate. All right. Fine. You'll have to, you'll have to interview him as well if he goes as one of them. <laughs> Definitely, mate. Um, been an absolute pleasure talking to you, mate. We're just about to hit the hour mark. Um, it's been a pleasure. 94 appearances for Wait for, like you said, you want to hit the 100 mark very soon. 75 tries, it's an unbelievable strike rate. You got three tries for England in one appearance. I, for me personally, I don't speak for the two other blokes, but I hope you continue it. Such a successful run for us as a club. It's, it's brilliant watching on the late wing. And, and whenever you pick up a ball and make a break, you see the entire of Bellevue rise. And I've not seen that. I've been, I've been watching Wakefield for over 15 years now, mate. And it's, it's, a, it's a pleasure and an honour to have you come through our academy and make such a... Such a stake on, on, on the Super League as well, mate. So thank you for that. Thank you for coming on our podcast. No, no, thank you. Um, it's been a pleasure. Um, like I said, I've, I've loved Wakefield for giving me the opportunity um, when obviously time was running out and things like that as I was coming through. And uh, I've loved my career at Wakefield and I've loved being welcomed. Like every, everyone, obviously, is, is so nice to me, obviously, you know, as the fans and things like that. It's a class club. It's real close, you know, knit community and things like that. So, I've loved everything about it, and uh, obviously, thank you for having me on here. It's been it's been good to talk to you, and I've really enjoyed myself. Excellent. Thank you very much, Tom Johnston. Our first podcast of 2021 is fully wrapped up. Join us for more interviews coming up, and obviously, the NRL and Super League season in March as well. Thank you very much, Tom, and we'll catch you all down the road. <laughs>